Hi, good morning, everyone. So obviously, you know my name, so I don't need to start from there. And I think I'm a bit too small to be labeled as an Amazon. <laughs> but thank you, everyone, for having me. So I'm going to be talking about girls can run. Definitely, we can run. Athletics, yes. Politics, I don't think everyone thinks so. So I'm going to start by painting a picture in our minds. So just follow me as I try to bring the message down to home in our heads and in our hearts as well. We all know birds, what they look like, right? They have two wings, basically born with two wings. I don't think I've ever come across a bird that has been born with just one wing. And through time as they grow up and they develop as birds, they learn to fly with both not just one because you can't fly with a bird can't fly with just one wing it's be handicapped and it's always still on the floor isn't it exactly so imagine a bird that is grounded for the entirety of its life simply because it cannot learn to use the other the other wing to fly it's not able to give expression to its creativity and the enormous potential it has it's not able to run away from prey from predators when it needs to it keeps on being grounded on the floor and not being able to soar to the skies. That's how our country is. For a very long time, we've learned to survive on one wing and give expression to one gender, especially in the areas of politics. Do we understand? We fail to give expression to the under gender and we fail to allow them to express their potential in different areas to enable our country to develop. So now I'm going to bring you down to my own personal experiences and what I noticed in 2019 general elections that just happened in February. I saw different, young, different women, not even young women, different women come out for office in various parts of the country. Very low numbers, not at all encouraging. However, some of them I do personally know but I noticed one particular thing. Most of the women that were coming out for office were between the ages of in their early 40s, 50s, and 60s, and so forth. And of course, they ran. I know I even know one that ran for the governor of Lagos State, but they didn't win. Not because they didn't have the passion, not because they didn't have the capacity, not because they didn't have the knowledge, but simply because they didn't start on time. They didn't have the political and the social capital to be able to navigate the very tough terrains of what we call Nigerian politics. This is what I think about Nigerian politics. It's a pig. And pigs like to play dirty. And to be able to navigate Nigerian politics, you need to be able to play dirty without getting your values shaken. And that takes a lot of experience and wisdom that someone, even though a woman in her mid-40s or early 50s, with all the knowledge and capacity that she has, will probably not be able to, terrain, to navigate that terrain. So they lost not because they weren't capable, but simply because they didn't start on time. Second thing I noticed, when it was coming, when the period for the elections was coming, because we had a lot of civil society actors, a lot of people that started paying lip service to women in politics. That was suddenly the time they knew that we should put women in power. We should encourage women to come out. Why? It's too late. Two months election is too late. Three months election is too late. Four months election is too late. One year to the election is even too late. And what this resulted in is that we just had a lot of women coming out with no general effect. Yes, there's a lot of inspiration. Yes, there's a lot of motivation, but no impact whatsoever. That's another personal observation of mine. What I decided to do about this after the 2019 elections was to write a book called Girls Just Want to Run. And its launch is tomorrow, but unfortunately not in Abakiliki. So my book basically talks about how young people all over Africa starting from the Arab Spring that took place in Libya and Tunisia, are changing dynamics of politics around Africa. 
Because whether we like it or not, one generation has been ruling us for a very, very long period of time. And I think it's about time we change the reins. We do not need old wineskins to lead us into the future, but young, dynamic people who, with their passion and motivation, but also combined with the wisdom of our forefathers, can lead us into the future that we need to create for the coming generation. So now, I talked about young people taking charge all over Africa, and I bring it down to, we have people advocating for politics, a new generation of leadership, but where are the young women in the midst of all this? Young women, in quotes, not just women, because that is a gap that we need to take advantage of. And I go down to saying, this, these are the reasons why these women should be in power. This is, these are the reasons why we should focus on putting young women at the center of our policy, empower them and put them in positions so that we can start having an enhanced development plan way ahead of time. Because like it or not, we will not thrive until we harness the potential of this gender, of this target group that we are not utilizing. And it's been an exciting journey so far because it's not just been a book, but it's also turned into a movement. We've had young people, very young people, might I add, all the way from Port Harcourt, from Akwai Bom, from Ogun States, of course Lagos, of course Abuja, basically pitching in to make sure that this story is told and the narrative is changed. And we've had men, young men actually, which is a very good development, because as Emma Watson said, it's a he for she movement, not a he against she movement. We can, women, young women can't do this on their own. We need the active involvement and support of men as well to be able to change this narrative because we're not fighting you, we're fighting for the development of our country. And the way things are going right now, we can't sit back and fold our arms and watch everything crumble to dust. You can't do it alone. We need to be there and we need to be at the center of everything. And this, mean, this means that young women definitely need to start on time. I'm 26 years old. Definitely not that young, but I've been, I've never run for political office, but I'm definitely going to. But I've been in this terrain for quite a while, and to be honest, it's not the easiest thing. But because it's not the easiest thing, or because her politics is a hard place for a young woman, it doesn't mean that she shouldn't be there. Quite opposite, it might mean that that is the place that she wants, she needs to be. Because when there is an opposition to you being a particular place, you probably need to be there to change the narrative. So my message is this today. Young women need to be involved in politics. And you don't have, you cannot be, cannot afford to wait so we're in our late 20s, or we're in our early 30s, or we're in our late 40s. I think most of us have heard of Greta Thunberg. She's a climate change activist, can going around the world campaigning for countries to lower their carbon emissions. She's about 16 years old. And young women can definitely do better than this. So we need to be given the space to, be, to express ourselves, because look at it really. We seem, to, we seem to have women conquer business, entrepreneurship, you know, the sciences, every other aspect except politics. Why? And needless to say, culture does play a very huge part in hindering our potential in this region. Because even up to date, it seems like as if Politics is gender stereotype to just be a man's business. But politics is, either, is neither male nor female. It just is. It only caters to capacity. So to conclude my short speech, my message is to every young woman in this room, the time is not tomorrow. The time is not in the next five years. The time is not in the next 10 years. In time is now, the next minute, the next second, the next hour, as soon as you're able to get up, as soon as you're able to log on to your internet and join a police car party, as soon as you're able to join something that can make a difference in your community. Because I'm not going to lie to you, the road is long and it's hard. But as much as possible, we're trying to make that road smoother for the rest of us that are coming behind. So please, politics is for you. 
politics needs you. Democracy is for you, and it needs you. Nigeria is for you, and it needs you. Thank you so much.